Here is the NASA official actually explaining to the president what a tiny little part of the whole cosmology this photograph actually represents. Here he is. Mr. President, if you held a grain of sand on the tip of your finger at arm's length, that is the part of the universe that you're seeing, just one little speck of the universe. We're looking back more than 13 billion years. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second, and that light that you are seeing on one of those little specks has been traveling for over 13 billion years. And by the way, we're going back further. Now, when you get that close to the Big Bang, Brad, when you get uh, more than 13 billion uh, what, years closer to the Big Bang, and as you say, it was less than a billion years before that, what does it actually tell you about the origin of this great universe? Yeah, this is kind of one of the big tasks of the James Webb Space Telescope is to actually point to the beginning of where the first stars are. Because we, we do know and calculate there's a bit of time. The Big Bang happens, and then we create atoms, and it takes time for those atoms to form together into stars. You know, stars aren't born overnight. Um, and so we want to see, essentially, when did those first stars shine? Because that really tells us, again, about that, that detailed process right after the Big Bang. And in fact, you know, what would be exciting is if the James Webb Space Telescope gets to a point where it sees nothing. Because um, we think but before the first stars, there's not much. We call it the dark ages because there's no light to be shining. So very rarely do you hope a space telescope would see nothing, but that would tell us so much about the beginning of the universe that we literally have no way of seeing until now with the James Webb Space Telescope, with its power, with its instruments. You know, I mean, and this image has been, uh, or this area has been imaged by Hubble, and when you see the Hubble version, you know, we loved it before, and now that we see this, you can't go back, right? You know, uh, we had our 1080p vision, and now we're at 8K. It's really hard to go back in terms of graphic and vision. But Brad, you know, when you see that this was only like, as they say, a little grain of sand That's right. when you compare all your field of vision. Um, the, and you see so many stars in just that little tiny patch. The whole universe must be absolutely teeming with other stars, other planets. It makes me think that the, charge, the chances are so high that there is some form of life on some other planet. That's right. When you look at all of those galaxies, there's thousands of galaxies, you said, in that little tiny speck of equivalent uh, sand on the sky. And all of those thousands of galaxies have hundreds of billions of stars. And all of those stars have planets going around it. And as you said, that's just one tiny fraction. The James Webb will really show just how big the universe is. And that's one of the other scientific goals. And that data, the rest of the first images and science data, will come out tonight about uh, midnight, 12.30 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Time. And one of those, and this is the big science of James Webb, will be to look at the atmospheres of some of these planets around other stars. So we're finding lots of planets around these stars. But one of the big questions is, does it have oxygen or nitrogen? Uh, does it have water? Could it have signs of life? The James Webb will provide the first image of that and through its career be studying these planets to see, yeah, are we alone? So it's not even showing Amazing. that we're probably not alone. It may give us the answer that we're not alone. Brad Tucker, this is just amazing stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Anytime.